I bet there are some civilizations out there, unlike humans, unlike us, where we look out and we look at the moon and we go, wow, I wonder what's up there. And then we get there, it's just this cold, dead rock and kind of boring. I mean, the gravity is a little less, but there's no atmosphere, you can't breathe it. Uh, I wonder what it would be like to look up, and instead of a moon being there, being an entirely different Earth, or even an ocean world that's a little less evolved than the Earth. Uh, Celeste asked me if I'd make a short video on binary stars, and that's one thing that uh, is a possibility. When you have stars, for those that are new, when you have stars together, if any of these objects that are very young end up orbiting each other, and those orbits remain stable with each other, then they will evolve together. So if you have binary stars, you have two stars together, they're not, and they don't get kicked out from the orbit with each other, they're just gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Eventually it'll be like an Earth, maybe even a younger Earth or a little bit more of an ocean world together. And you'll have these two objects in orbit around each other or the reverse. Like it'll be a recently dead object where all the life is um, eventually gone and we can still uh, habitate it. We can still live on there and all the life is basically gone but it still has a breathable atmosphere. To think how crazy it would be for two objects that have evolved and have formed life, formed life around the same time as each other, but one maybe 10,000 years, a little bit more, 10,000 years more evolved, which is really, really close when you think in terms of how long it takes for a star to evolve like the Earth. So you have four and a half billion years that the Earth took to evolve. And then you have a short window of when, you know, agricultural started about 10,000 years ago, we started plowing the fields and whatnot and staying put, uh, domesticating uh, different animals. 10,000, 15,000 years is nothing compared to four and a half billion. So wouldn't it be kind of cool to have a binary system, uh, two stars cooling and collapsing and forming life, but one of them is a little bit behind the other. So we could look up and see another Earth, but say it's maybe a million years younger. So it doesn't even have real people walking around. It just has really exotic life. Or, for a billion, gosh, to think one of the objects, one of the Earths could have us on it. And we look up, we finally can master, you know, rocket technology. And we want to visit this object. And that object has dinosaurs on it. Or really large sea creatures or whatnot. So it's just this incredibly exotic world that everybody wants to visit. I guess that would give some impetus for the uh, space the space industry uh, to build rockets much more efficiently and cheaper because people want to go up there and check it out, you know. But um, that being said, binary stars, I'm sure there are a lot of incredibly ancient systems that have mixed and mingled with each other. Also, maybe they haven't always been in orbit around each other. Maybe another Earth got kicked out of orbit with another Earth and it just adopted another Earth next to it. So you have two civilizations that for some wild reason, for pure statistical reasons, ended up orbiting each other. And then you have two completely different planets that are in orbit around each other that have civilizations on them now. I don't know if they'd get along very well, but it would be uh, pretty wild, to, to say the least. I guess that would be a good storyline for a science fiction book. Um, but anyways, uh, there's that. And another thing too, uh, I I sort of noticed a, a culture of uh, centered around Elon Musk and getting to Mars. I don't know if that's a very wise uh, approach. I think we should lean more towards not 
ignoring what we actually observe, but actually take what we observe that gets ridiculed and then study that instead of just blindly plowing through, spending a whole hell of a lot of time, energy, and resources using the technology we have. Instead, maybe we could figure out how some of the UFOs work uh, and study that. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, hate and ridicule surrounding the UFO subject. The government calls them UAPs, but they're UFOs, unidentified flying objects. That's the history of them. But we should sit, spend more money trying to figure out how those things work. Maybe we won't even need rockets. Maybe we'll be able to get to Mars in these super advanced craft that we've copied the technology from, from people who uh, can get here from there already. And we just don't have to bother with rockets anymore. And those vast distances that we have a hard time grasping uh, and a hard time sort of traversing, uh, maybe those distances won't really matter anymore. It would be like a, you know, the difference between a you know a sailboat and a uh, and a and a jet. You know, it takes you quite a few weeks to sail around the world, but with a jet, you can do it within a few hours. Maybe. Was it around the world? Maybe that'd be like 24 or 30 hours. I'm not sure, but. And then from a sailboat to a jet, and then from a jet to a spaceship that can operate just like the UFOs do in our atmosphere, that would be one hell of a jump too, again. But anyways, uh, that's, that's basically sums up this talk. I know I got off on a tangent there. Uh, binary stars, later.